Negotiating with out the door car pricing, the ultimate car dealer kryptonite. Now you'll fully understand why negotiating with OTD pricing at car dealerships is so killer good. Negotiating the out the door OTD price with car dealers is particularly effective for several reasons, starting with the fact that it simplifies the car buying process and most often leads to better deals for consumers. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and right across the way is the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Well, friends, the reason we're highlighting the OTD technique today is that while we've talked about it for a very long time on this show, I know from interactions that I have with our members every day from this channel, far too many of you still don't fully understand how to use OTD price negotiations effectively. Now for a quick bit of housekeeping. Many of you have complained to us several times that YouTube continues to shut off your subscriber notifications on our channel. When subscribers have tried to reactivate the notifications, the pull-down menu says disabled. That's crap and we're sick of it. We also know YouTube routinely throttles down our content. Every show goes to trickle after day one. That never used to happen. For a very long time, the platform has had a clear negative outlook on people like us who consistently promote the truth with good solid content. Meanwhile, YouTube relentlessly promotes clickbaiters. We're done with relying upon YouTube to help us get the word out. So we've taken matters into our own hands and we hope thousands of you will join us in this effort. Visit our website, thehomerguy.com. We now offer a button on our website where you can sign up for email or text message alerts of future new shows and new blog posts. For some time now, we've been very aware that the YouTube community doesn't really like us and we're tired of being blacklisted. That has cost us a ton of money and unfortunately, Many of you have had to miss out on good shows we've put out. Before we get into the details and benefits of OTD pricing and explaining what it is, I want to say that I know by now that many of you are aware of the outstanding job Stuart Cooper is doing for our viewers who hire us for our car buying service. If you're new here or you just didn't know about it, our new car buying service is on our website homepage and it absolutely kicks butt. Yeah. Pay attention here, not because I'm trying to pitch you on hiring us to help you with your car, I just want to teach you a very critical lesson. The entire reason Stuart is doing such a fantastic job of negotiating great prices for our viewers is that he is negotiating with dealers based off of an OTD price, just as we've said that you should be doing. He doesn't actually care what they list for fees and add-ons. He just drills that price down. Stuart has demonstrated that OTD negotiations work tremendously well. Yes. Stuart is fast at it because he has refined his technique to the point that he can do it right over the phone, calling dealers from the comfort of home. Every one of these car deals he has done for us from around the country have been crazy good, yet he's never left New York to do it. Do you think you have the capacity to produce the same kind of great car deal like Stuart does? Maybe, and I have talked to a few of you who I know can probably do it. Let me give a quick shout out to Nadia, who I spoke to the other day. I knew the moment I talked to her and she explained how she bought her previous cars that she didn't need any additional help. Nadia, you have my full confidence. You'll knock this one out of the park on your own. And by the way, <laughs> I do want an update from you when you get your car. Yeah, send us a picture. There's also Jason and Desiree that Kevin did a phone call with the other day. And after visiting with them, um, Kevin, you were convinced that they could also do a really good job on their own. Yes. Some of you do, in fact, have a fighting chance against a dealer like Nadia and Jason and Desiree. Both great examples. But for those of you who are still a little bit unsure, stay tuned. Before we get into the benefits, let's explain what out the door pricing is and how it's supposed to work. First, OTD stands for out the door. This is a total price, all things included that you're gonna pay for your vehicle to be able to leave. We've done a big part of the work for you by creating an OTD email template and posting it for free on our website, thehomerguy.com. Liz, let's quickly recap the details people should make sure they have on their OTD request to a car dealer. Well, before I get into those details, I want to make sure you're clear that you don't just send a random email to a dealership. You send it to a specific member of their sales staff. The real trick is how do you determine which salesman to send it to? Sure. It's pretty easy, actually. If I've never been to a given dealer in my life and I'm shopping for a car there, I look up their Google reviews. I want to see a total score of 4.4 stars or higher with plenty of reviews so that fudging their numbers would be too hard for them to do. Like as in they don't have enough employees to go and plug in you know, thousands of reviews. Yeah. Then I scan the reviews looking for a recent great review that contains the name of a specific salesperson. That's the guy or gal that I want to talk to. 
For example, just the other day, I was looking up a truck at Wesley Motor Company, which is a Ford dealer in Minot, North Dakota. It's a real dealer, and I'm going to demo a real phone call for you. It's just an hour away from me, so no big deal for me driving there for a good deal. I noticed they have a rating average of 4.6 stars on over 1,000 Google reviews, so, so far, so good. I also easily found a recent good review done by Brandon, who described great service with his salesman, Joey. I liked what I read about Joey, so I looked him up in the dealer directory and then called him. Keep in mind that I'm nowhere close to sending an OTD email yet. I'm just making a phone call to get the ball rolling. Well, here's where the action starts. Kevin gets Joey on the line. Hello, this is Joey. How can I help you? Hello, Joey. This is Kevin. I'm actually in the market for a truck, and I was busy checking out reviews for your dealership and found a great review that your customer, Brandon, had written about you on a recent truck that he purchased. He was very complimentary about how you handled his truck purchase. So I'm looking for a salesperson who knows how to deliver excellent customer service. So I decided to call you. Well, thanks, Kevin. I really appreciate that. So here's the deal, Joey. I'm in a market for a new truck myself, and I see a 2023 Ram 1500 Rebel on your lot. It's a good looking truck. I have owned Ram trucks before and had good luck with them. So here's what I'd like to do. If I can get your email, I'll send you an email stating my interest in this vehicle and I'll include my full name and all of my contact information at that time, including a callback number. Okay, that sounds great. My email is... All right, so be on the lookout for my email. It will come shortly. By the way, Joey, if we can agree on a price I'm willing to pay, I'll be interested in hearing what your finance office has to offer when the time comes. That's great. Thanks for the call today, Kevin. No problem. I'll be in touch soon. Boom. That was a real phone call that I recorded for your benefit. I hope now you have a better idea about how to properly set up an OTD price negotiation. Incidentally, I also noticed the sales manager also has the same last name as a salesman, so it's likely he's Joey's dad. That helps with the negotiation process. That was a great call, Kevin. Very skillfully done. I hope that everyone appreciated that. Personally, I love negotiating with out-the-door pricing for a lot of reasons. First, negotiating the OTD price provides a clearer, simpler, and often cheaper way to purchase a vehicle. It has a ton of benefits that we'll get into in just a moment. Honestly, OTD pricing helps buyers avoid the pitfalls of layered fees and hidden costs, making it a smart strategy when dealing with car dealers. Here's a few of the reasons OTD negotiations are so good. Number one is transparency. The out-the-door price includes not only the base price of the vehicle, but all taxes, fees, and additional costs associated with the purchase. This transparency helps prevent hidden fees that can arise when negotiating strictly on the sticker price or monthly payments. Knowing the total cost upfront makes it easier for buyers to compare prices between different dealerships and avoid surprises when finalizing the sale. Number two, easier budgeting. When you negotiate based on the OTD price, you know exactly how much money you need to complete the purchase. Yeah. This clarity is beneficial for budgeting and financing as you can secure a loan for a precise amount or ensure you have enough cash on hand for a one-time payment. Number three, reduced complexity. Negotiating on individual components like the car price, documentation fees, dealer add-ons, and financing options can be complex and confusing. Consolidating everything into a single figure simplifies that negotiation process. It puts the buyer and seller on the same page about the total cost, reducing the chances of misunderstandings and disputes. Number four, better deals. Focusing on the OTD price often leads to better overall deals like the one Stewart's getting. Dealers might be willing to waive certain fees or offer discounts when they see a buyer is informed and insisting on an OTD price. This comprehensive approach prevents dealers from shifting costs between different areas like reducing the price but increasing the fees totally. to make the deal seem better than it actually is. Number five is time efficiency. Negotiating the out-the-door price can save your time. Instead of haggling over multiple line items, negotiation is streamlined to an all-encompassing number. This efficiency can make the buying process quicker and less stressful for both parties. Number six, focus on final costs. Dealers often use tactics such as focusing on monthly payment amounts to distract buyers from the total cost of the car. By negotiating the OTD price, you keep the focus on the final total vehicle cost, which is more financially significant than the monthly payment is. In essence, negotiating the OTD price provides a clearer, simpler, and often cheaper way to purchase a vehicle. As I stated earlier, it helps buyers avoid the pitfalls of layered fees and hidden costs, making it a smart strategy when dealing with car dealers. 
Also, while you are waiting to get that first OTD offer back from the dealership, that's the time to test drive the vehicle. Never get so eager that you forget to take it for a test drive. Yeah. If the dealer will agree at this time, it's also a good time to sneak in a PPI, a pre-purchase inspection. That way, when you start negotiating on this vehicle and hit them back with your own OTD offer, it's actually a vehicle that you'd buy if the numbers are right. Now, as far as the amount you should counter offer with, get signed up with a $49.99 consults package and I can supply you with black book values on the vehicle. You can add tax, title, and license to that number and there you have it. The sum of those numbers is your revised OTD counter offer. There's definitely a right way and a wrong way to negotiate a car deal, especially in today's car market. Sadly, there's a lot of you out there who do this consistently the wrong way. So how do we fix it? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the very person who does a ton of the coaching available through our website-based memberships, available now at thehomeworkguy.com. There's a simple reason this video is so important, and for good reason, we've made it about the worst negotiating habits and techniques you can possibly attempt to do when you're buying a car. You know us as the longest-running car buying channel here on YouTube, producing videos for the last 15 years. We've paved the way for others to join us here on YouTube and succeeded in motivating others to follow us into the realm of helping car buyers just like you. It was one of our early goals when we first launched our YouTube channel. For 15 years, we've been here on YouTube teaching millions of people just like you how to not get taken advantage of by car dealers while working a car deal. We'll go over several no-nos in car negotiations and offer advice on what you should do instead. We've already taught you about one of the most effective negotiating techniques, which is out the door negotiating, and we covered it in a recent show, so we won't talk about it again here. Instead, today we are focusing on some of the worst habits and techniques some of you are still using out there at dealerships. These are not just made up things, and these are not just techniques that we've heard about once or twice. These are techniques that people continue to try over and over again. I see evidence of these techniques in the viewer emails that I read on a daily basis, but good on those of you who reach out, become members, and allow us to steer you in the right direction. The number one mistake that many people make in the car industry is not realizing you're actually working three separate transactions in one car deal. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did say there are three transactions to negotiate. Most often people look at the car deal as being just one transaction and that is a big mistake, friends. As I've said, it is actually three transactions and you've got to look at it this way when you're buying a vehicle. So let's get right to it. The first transaction is the purchase price of the vehicle. To know a proper purchase price, you must do your market research. Just shooting for a lower number because it's lower is useless. Most of you understand this one. Now for the second transaction, you're going to negotiate how you're going to pay for the vehicle. So that could be financing like interest rates in a loan term if you need a car loan. And part of that transaction could be the amount of down payment you're going to make. Then of course, there's those of you who could be paying in full with cash. And equally important as the first two transactions I mentioned happens to be the third transaction. That's negotiating the vehicle you're thinking of trading in. You start all of this process by first negotiating the vehicle that you're purchasing and then getting it to the price that you want. When it comes to the price of the car, you do not ever negotiate on monthly payments or work off of a payment plan. You negotiate the price to what's affordable for you. You've got to do all your homework on payments beforehand from the comfort of home. That's why we first started calling ourselves the homework guy. You don't attempt this negotiation on the dealership's turf without homework in advance. When you negotiate on dealership property without having done your homework, you're giving up much needed leverage and putting yourself at a big disadvantage. They call it home field advantage for a reason. If right. you're at the dealership, you're not on your home turf. Meanwhile, the dealer is, and this is the reason why they're always telling you, just come on in and we'll work a deal. Right. They want you on their turf. You have to be aware that they do this every day and mostly by strong arming buyers while on the dealer's home turf. Meanwhile, you, the car buyer, only do this every three to five years, maybe 10 or 20 years. <laughs> Secondly, if you need a loan to buy a car, you've got to worry about the financing. We've always said to prepare yourself for the second transaction in a car deal by first getting pre-approved at your own bank or credit union. Always start there if you need a car loan. If you're paying cash for your next car, do not disclose that you're paying cash too early in the price negotiations because cash buyers get treated to a very different level of commitment to earn your business on the part of the dealership. They want a car loan to hide additional profits that are referred to as back-end profits produced by dealer finance officers. Now for you cash buyers, hear me out. If the dealer is willing to give you a better deal because you finance the car 
overpaying with cash. You could fight them using the FTC cars rule, which has strong language about offering price being the cash price. Or you could just do what we've sometimes suggested, utilizing a 62 month term or longer and just pay it off if you wish when you receive your payment book. This will guarantee you get the lower financing price without a ton of argument that many of you really don't have the stomach to go for anyway. And taking this route is not going to cost you much in interest expense. You're definitely going to be money ahead. For sure. As we've said many times, the very first and foremost thing you do if you are financing is to get pre-approved with your own bank or credit union. This way you already know the best rate that you qualify for, and then you use that rate to negotiate with the dealer to get an even lower rate. It's actually okay to finance with the car dealership. It truly is, but you've just got to know the situation that you're walking into and what you qualify for. So if you're pre-approved at 4% from your own bank, ask the dealer to beat it, and if they offer you 2.9%, take it. The way you can get the lowest possible payment and lowest possible interest rate is getting pre-approved for a car loan, which is why we emphasize that. You do this so you don't overpay for your car. Then of course, there's that pesky trade-in. Everyone hates the trade-in process, so they try to avoid it. The dealers will all start out trying to lowball your current car. Of course, sometimes they surprise you by not lowballing you, but the bottom line is, if you just don't have the right information, you don't know for sure what your car is worth, and you're at a disadvantage again. Here at The Homework Guy, we can book out your trade for you using BlackBook, the most popular book out service utilized by car dealers. Just get signed up for a consult level membership on our website and ask me for help on this today. When you know what your vehicle is worth from a reliable source, it's a game changer. Indeed it is. If you'd prefer to go this alone, you should know it's quite possible to get the wrong information working on it from home. Yes. If you start assuming, you get yourself into trouble. You've got to do some homework on your trades and use reliable methods. Most often, I go for getting four to five independent appraisals. That much info is hard to argue with no matter how hard-headed any dealer might be. There's quite a few sources that you can check with besides bookout information. There's Carvana, CarMax, CarGurus, and a Kelly Blue Book cash offer, and of course, appraisals from other independent dealerships. Before you go to the dealership that you're looking to buy the car from, go to another dealer with a similar brand and have them appraise your car. Ask for it in writing. You should make this trip about a week before you want to buy the new car, have the dealer appraise it, and then just say, if I find out that you've offered a good value for my trade, I will likely come back later when I'm ready to buy. What we've outlined today is how you properly work a car deal, and if you're not doing it this way, you're negotiating your car deal wrong. Next up are extremely low ball offers from you on the dealer's car you want to buy. If you hit them with an extremely low ball offer, you're unlikely to even get a response. Many of you tell me that dealers aren't even getting back to you. The problem is that you started it all wrong and you're too far apart to even start a conversation. You've got to do your market homework before you get in contact with the dealership. You also need to negotiate your car deal while you're at home using the out the door method that we've been teaching. Don't pull numbers out of thin air friends, do your homework and negotiate using facts. Starting negotiations on a car deal inside the dealership is usually detrimental to your financial well-being. If you go this route, you won't be buying a car at the lowest available price. When you stay at home and negotiate through text messaging or email, I promise you, you're always going to get a much better deal. But if you hit the dealer with a ridiculously low ball offer while sitting at the dealership, <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere with that. For example, if a dealership has the vehicle that you're looking for priced at $20,000 and you offer them $12,000, they won't have that kind of markup in the deal. Not at all. Nope. Think about something. Unfortunately, many of you are spending more money at your local grocery store every month than you are in a car payment, but you don't negotiate with the grocery store, do you? Some of you just go shop elsewhere, which is what you have to do sometimes with car dealers. Shop elsewhere. When it comes to a car, unlike the groceries, most of you want to negotiate and we don't blame you. You should. However, if you do a good job of researching the vehicle you want from home using all the homework resources we mentioned earlier, when you're looking at other vehicles like the one you're shopping for, you'll see other comparable prices out there. You'll know where to go from there. For the last few years during the pandemic, you really haven't had any negotiating power. Yet dealerships were spending a lot of money to make sure they could market to people who are looking for them at CarGurus, TrueCar, Edmunds, Cars.com, etc. In general, Dealers do a lot of research to ensure that when they price their cars, that the prices you find on their vehicles are attractive enough to get you to contact them. Despite all the different vehicles dealers have, do you know what's the number one thing that sells a car? Unfortunately, despite all those bells and whistles, it still is the price of the vehicle. Yep. 
For many years, the price war was a race to the bottom for the car dealership world in order to attract your call or your interest. And to a lesser extent, it kind of still is right now. Although there's still plenty of dealers who got so greedy and comfortable with robbing people during the pandemic, those guys are a little slow to get their prices back in line with the others. It doesn't mean that you can't find a hungry dealership out there. Now, back around to your trade-in, it kind of goes right along with looking up financing and a good price for your next car. It's all tied together, but you need to treat it like three different transactions. Now, let's recap quickly how you should start this process. We shared with you a short time ago that we typically recommend targeting dealers who have a healthy amount of good reviews, enough to bring their average Google rating up to a minimum of 4.4 stars. Higher is even better. Read the reviews to find a customer who wrote a nice recent review and go so far as to name their salesman or saleswoman. Start the process with that person by calling them. Tell them you read the good review left by their recent customer. Just say, I'm looking for someone who will provide great customer service, so I called you. Stay on a first name basis during the phone call and say, if you give me your email, I'll send you my full contact information along with a callback number. Then start the online conversation by reminding them of your phone call. Then email them the vehicle information you're interested in. Ask them in the email for their out-the-door price on it. You can use our free email template found on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. The worst thing you can do is to start pushing for that lowball price up front before they even get a chance to respond. Let them tell you what they want and then use that feedback to start your negotiations. Also keep in mind that while we've often encouraged buyers to look over state lines and we even did a recent show on out-of-state car buying, check it out if you missed it, Remember that the distance you are from the dealership does have an impact on their willingness to negotiate with you. Yes. The further you are away from the dealership, the less likely you're going to make a lot of progress with them. There's an easier way to get fake dealership fees out of your car deal and off your car contract. We've talked about the FTC, but there's an easier pathway, friends, without a fight. And I want to make sure that you can understand it so you can enjoy car shopping again. Well, even a little bit more. Yeah. It has to do with your focus and where your strategy should be. And we've had lots of viewers and channel members we've coached on how to do it successfully. We'll share that in a moment. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. Liz, we've previously taught our viewers how to use the FTC cars rule with dealers, right? Right, but not everyone wants to fight. Exactly. Not everyone has the intestinal fortitude for a long, drawn-out fight with a dealer. So... We're going to share a tidbit with you, which is not only what we've been doing for a while now, but so has our man Stuart, and it has a lot to do with why he is getting the most amazing car deals in the market right now, day after day. What it takes is a very simple mind shift on how to approach fake fees. Of course, we have had viewers go successfully head-to-head -head with car dealers like Kathy and Jackie, but not everyone has that kind of stomach, so let's roll. Step number one is knowing what fake dealership fees actually are. Friends, we've talked extensively about this on several videos. Here's the recap because Sirius is a heart attack. We have people ask us daily, is this a fake fee? Fake fees from dealerships, friends, are just added expenses to you, the consumer, so the dealer can make more money on the sale without looking like you're actually paying a higher price for the car. But in fact, that's exactly what's happening. Dealer fees just artificially jack up the price of the car for no legitimate reason. Fake dealer fees include things like huge document fees, reconditioning fees, e-filing fees, and the list just goes on and on. And on and on. And on and on. After you watch this strategy video, go ahead and read about the fake fees on our blog on our website, thehomeworkguy.com, or go back and see our most popular videos covering fake fees, like the video we did a few years ago, 11 Fake Fees. Still relevant today. Yes. So simply put, fake fees are anything else on your car contract that is taxed. That's right. Only the state required fees are tax free because, well, they are essentially a state tax already. Think about how messed up it is that you're paying taxes on dealer fees. It's a sales tax, right? So you're being sold a fee when you let a dealer get away with charging you for their fake fees. Step two in getting fake dealership fees removed is actually knowing how to ask the dealership for the price of the car. If you don't understand what an OTD, out the door price is, check out this recent video. Out the door price means how much it will cost you to drive the car off the lot. You should ask for the price in writing and if you want, use the handy out the door email templates we have on our website, thehomeworkguy.com under the blog tab. Let me be clear, you ask the dealership to give you the price of the car OTD or out the door first. Wait for them to reply to you in writing. 
Our template asks for all taxes and fees to be itemized and included in the email. Here's why that is important. As I mentioned earlier, fake fees are always taxed. So simply think of them as just adding to the price you're paying for the car. A car selling at 30,000 before tax title and registration is the same price as a car for sale at 27,000, but with 3,000 in fake fees and add-ons tacked on. But it's a problem when a given car for sale at 30,000 with 3,000 in extra fees, bringing it to 33,000 is no longer a good price. I see this a lot with our viewer members. They are so fixated on the price line on the car contract saying the lowest price that they forget to think of the total price out the door for the car. Honestly, if the price of the car at 30,000 is a good price, that's a good price no matter what the details on the paper say. Step number three is determining the actual good out the door price of the car. Take the price of the car that is fair, call your own DMV and ask them to quote you the total state sales tax title and license fees to get you down the road. When you have this done, it takes you right to step four. And that is you counter offer the dealership with a total number that is a fair market price plus tax title and license, the fees given to you by the DMV. You don't put your energy into arguing about the price of the document fee. That's meaningless. And you don't argue about the nitrogen filled tires, which are a hoax by the way. When the dealer tells you that you forgot to factor in their fees, you simply say, whoa, this is my bottom line price based on a fair price with appropriate fees for the car. This is what Stuart does and he doesn't budge. He doesn't budge. You need to be pretty determined and confident to stand your ground and make this happen like he does, friends. But your willingness to wait a while before replying to the salesman is pretty impactful. Make him or her sweat it out. By the way, do you know how this works? While he or she is responding via email to you, the car salesman isn't busy with another customer in the showroom. Or maybe BSing with another salesman. Which happens a lot. Right. <laughs> he or she is taking a breather to go through their history of clients to see who they can spring loose to come into the dealership by the end of the month. If they know you're standing fast on a given price, they'll keep pestering their management until they give in. There's part of the magic. Once they've agreed to your offer, step five is getting your car. You can do the same thing in the finance office. Stick to your bottom line price. Verify that all the paperwork is correct too. If the everyone pays that fee line comes up, politely reply that this figure you have in writing is your out the door price and you're gonna stick to it. By the way, the dealer finance officer is also legally required to stick to it. That's exactly right. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking, oops, I already let the cat out of the bag, meaning <laughs> you've been arguing about line item fees with the dealership staff. You really only have one of two choices. First, immediately shift the conversation away from, I'm not paying this or that fee, and get it back as quickly as possible to, this is the total price I'm willing to pay. Focus on the OTD. If you can't change the conversation, you'll have to start arguing with things like the Clayton Act of 1913, a law that's already in place to combat tied selling and forced fees. Always be aware that the new FTC cars rule is simply a federal clarification of all the federal laws that are already in place to protect you, the car buyer. I think this is a great place to mention some recent dirt sent to us yeah. about the Florida state government. We <laughs> routinely tell people who want to file an FTC complaint that this is a good step, but also include a complaint to your own state attorney general's office. Here's what our viewer Jim sent to us from the state of Florida. BDS complaint, should say BS. Yeah. BDS complaint response from the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles at flhsmv.gov. Dear Jim, please see the attached reference complaint against Miami Lakes Kia. Florida law allows dealers to sell vehicles at whatever price the market will permit. They can add extras to a vehicle if they choose. It is fully permissible under Florida law. Consumers have the right to negotiate or not purchase a vehicle due to the terms. Signed, the Florida Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles Division of Motorist Services, Bureau of Dealer Services. You know what, Kevin? I think the name says it all. Spell that out for our viewers, Liz. Signed, Florida Bureau of Dealer Services. You nailed it. Now we know why Florida turns a blind eye to the fact that they have some of the worst dealerships in the country. Thankfully, Florida friends, there are dealers like Earl Stewart Toyota and Mullinax Ford who are trying to change the tide by simply not using fake fees and unwanted add-ons. If you're in Florida, these are the dealers worth visiting first. Following these tips is so important to assure you go about removing fake fees correctly. You'll improve your odds, I guarantee it. How to negotiate once you're in the car dealer finance office. 
the box, the lone lagoon, the contract cave, and the debt dungeon. Okay, Kevin, we get it. Nobody wants to be there, but... But if you know what you're doing, the finance office isn't as scary or intimidating as it sounds. Today, we're going to break it all down for you. By the end of this video, you'll know if you're ready, or maybe not ready at all, to go head-to-head -head with the highest paid salesman in the whole dealership, the finance officer. Yes, I did say salesman. We also have additional help and resources on our website, thehomeworkguy.com, for those of you who may need it. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, The Homework Guy, and right across the way is Amazing Elizabeth. You ready for this, Liz? I am so ready, Kevin. Friends, we're going to move quickly to give a thorough overview on dealer finance, but please, as always, feel free to comment below if there's anything we discuss that you'd like to hear more about. I'm also thinking of a possible part two on this subject, as there's a lot to know about this office, so make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to keep in touch. First off is preparation before visiting the dealership. We talk about this a lot. Oh, yeah. Before stepping foot into a dealership, you should already have a clear idea of your financing options. This involves getting a pre-approval for a loan from your own bank or credit union. There are plenty of reasons for this and why it's so important. A loan pre-approval not only provides you with a concrete understanding of what interest rates you qualify for, but it also gives you leverage when negotiating in the finance office. For starters, you can make the finance officer try to meet or beat your loan offer. Also, if the finance officer tries to tell you that he or she can get you a better rate if you buy a certain product from them, claiming their bank wants you to have it, you can say, well, that's interesting because my own banker gave me a great rate and didn't mention one word about that product. All right. Well, assuming you've already done a good job of negotiating the price of the vehicle from the comfort of home ahead of time, and you've negotiated a good out-the-door price, you're ready for a sit-down in the finance office. The most important thing to remember, stay calm, confident, and focused. Very focused. Just take one thing at a time. Don't let high-pressure sales tactics of the finance officer throw you off your game. Relax, breathe deeply, my friends. The finance officer may try to overwhelm you with numbers and jargon and signatures, but remember that you are actually the one in control. This is your money, so just be assertive. Politely but firmly decline any offers or terms you're uncomfortable with. Always take your time. Don't rush into a decision. If you need more time to think, just ask for it. Don't get sucked into rushing by a finance officer who says, don't worry, I'll get you out of here quickly. That kind of statement is usually a cover-up statement for pushing you to ignore what you're actually signing. And they do love to say that. Yep. We've said this before, but it is worth repeating. You absolutely must separate all of the negotiations, and there are three. The visit into finance is the third part of your vehicle negotiation. Remember also that the second part of the negotiation was your trade, and we covered that just a few days ago in this video. Dealerships often blend these negotiations in the hopes that they can get you focused on numbers that are meaningless. Those kinds of tactics can make it harder to see the true cost of the loan. By focusing on the total cost of your purchase, which is visible right on your car contract, you can avoid the monthly payment trap. Dealers often try to get you more focused on an affordable monthly payment, ignoring the total cost what you'll pay. Quote, affordable. <clears throat> yeah. This can hide the true cost of the car from your consideration, so don't fall for it. Always ask for all terms in writing. Request that all terms and conditions be provided in writing before you sign anything. Make them print it out instead of showing it to you on an iPad or some other electronic device. Just today, a woman contacted me, and she had gotten hoodwinked with this strategy. Computers hide a lot of scams pulled on car buyers. Indeed. If you're financing, the physically printed copies should show interest rate, loan term, monthly payment, and any additional fees. Carefully review the terms to ensure they match what you have discussed. This is how Stuart takes care of our people, and it's working swimmingly well. After he negotiates a car deal for one of our viewers, he sends them all the pre-negotiated details in writing. All they have to do is compare those written out-the-door details to what the dealer has ready for them to sign at the dealership. They just sign and drive. It's the one time that just signing and driving is actually a pretty good thing. Yeah. This is the office where a little knowledge of state and federal law comes in handy and where most people miss the mark in the finance office negotiations. You must understand your rights. We've gone over the FTC cars rule extensively in several videos, but let me say this. People comment and email us all the time to say, is the cars rule even in effect? And the answer in so many words is actually yes. yes. The update to the cars rule is simply a clarification of federal laws already on the books, and these apply in every state. And while it's true that the FTC is in court right now with NADA, Arguing why we need additional muscle behind these laws so that when any dumb dealer gets out of line, they can bring the hammer of the law down on them. 
Dealers have already paid tens of millions in FTC fines for violating the details spelled out in the FTC CARS rule. Here are some additional key points to watch out for in the finance office. The principal amount is the initial sum that you borrow, which is essentially the price of the car after your down payment and any trade-in value is applied. The interest rate is the cost of borrowing that money. It's expressed as a percentage and usually is a fixed number. The loan term is a duration that you have to repay the loan, typically expressed in months. We always recommend taking a 36 or 48 month loan at the longest to pay off your vehicle, but it is acceptable to take the car loan of 62 months or longer on purpose in order to pay it off early at a comfortable pace without the prepayment penalty. That's right. We have so many cash buyers on our channel, it's worth mentioning that there's a whole video dedicated to taking the loan to get better treatment and immediately paying it off. Check it out here. It's a great way to get the garbage of your car loan off without a big fight because loan officers are a little more willing to work with people who take out a car loan. Yeah, just a little bit. But if you need a loan, here are some tips on monthly payments. Your monthly payment includes both principal and interest. It's crucial to understand how much you'll pay each month and what portion goes toward the principal versus interest. Loans from credit unions are usually the same amount of principal and interest in each car loan payment. Loans from car dealers and many of their banks are front-loaded with mostly interest being paid at the beginning of a loan and mostly principal towards the end of the loan. Mortgages are the same, by the way, so making extra payments early on is huge for decreasing the total amount that you'll spend. The down payment is the amount you pay up front when purchasing the car. A larger down payment reduces the principal amount, which can lower monthly payments and total interest paid. While some dealers may offer zero down as an incentive, a down payment of at least 20% is recommended to avoid being upside down on your loan and then needing gap insurance. Yep. And that's if your car is selling at the correct market price. If it's greatly inflated, it may be necessary to pay 30% down or more or plan to tack on a few hundred more on your car payment each month. Of course, there are the famous fake fees and additional costs. These can include fake fees like application fees, origination fees, document fees, prep fees, and the like. The actual legal fees come from your state that you're registering your car in, and that includes things like title, tax, and registration fees, and sales tax. The simplest way to find out ahead of time is to get in touch with your own DMV office and get them to quote you the required state fees and taxes. So if you didn't know, APR, annual percentage rate, includes the interest rate plus any additional fees, giving you the true cost of the loan over a year. The car itself is the collateral for the loan. So if you can't make your payments, the lender can repossess the vehicle. Yep. And there are some YouTube creators out there right now that are obsessed with this. It's unfortunate. It is happening, but do what makes sense for you. At this point, make sure you've read the entire agreement carefully. Ask questions if anything is unclear. You should be given all the time necessary to properly review the papers. Don't let yourself be rushed. Remember, it's your money and your future. You need to do this right. If you're able, ask for the papers ahead of time so you simply have to compare the two copies just like Stuart does. It's part of the secret sauce here at THG. If the finance officer is too aggressive or you feel uncomfortable with the terms, be prepared to walk away. Totally. Sometimes showing that you're willing to leave can lead to better offers. Remember, you are not obligated to accept the first offer they put out there. Walking away can give you time to consider other options to negotiate better terms. This is called blowing up the deal, and it's always a nightmare for the finance manager. Believe me, after you're gone, he's going to get his butt chewed from upper management. <laughs> it's far better for a dealer to accept a deal with less profit and actually finish the deal than it is to let the deal blow up and lose all the time and effort they put into trying to sell you a car. It's also important, friends, to keep these things in perspective. How often do you buy a house? Are you an expert if you've only done something once or twice in your lifetime? Car loans are also complicated, and for most people, the second biggest money-related decision that they'll ever make. Preparation and knowledge are your best tools. By researching financing options, understanding the car's value, and being aware of the various elements of a car loan, you can enter the finance office with confidence. Stay calm, stay focused, ask for all terms in writing, and be prepared to walk away if necessary. With these strategies, you can secure a fair and favorable car loan that meets your needs. If you're not feeling very confident about car shopping, it's okay. You can sign up to get my help via email or text from our website, thehomeworkguy.com. Email help is $24.99 and texting is $49.99 and both packages are good for 30 days. And if you missed it before, you can also try our hassle-free car buying service with Stuart's help. You can expect to save four to six times the cost of the service and you'll never find an easier way to buy a car. We guarantee it. 
Some people save even a lot more than that. After all the years of doing what we've done for people here on YouTube, I can honestly say that getting Stuart involved with our Homework Guy team has been one of the best decisions we've made for helping consumers. Everyone saves many times more than the cost to work with Stuart, but just in case, there's a money-back guarantee. Yes. Thanks again to all of you out there in our audience for coming back. We greatly appreciate your loyalty. To all of our longtime loyal subscribers, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. Thanks for listening.